The government of Australia recently has come to the conclusion that mental health in the workplace is as important as physical health in the workplace. We have with us here Pedro Diaz, who is the founder and director of the Mental Health Recovery Institute, here to address all this. Welcome. Thank you, Joe. I love to be here. I love your work. Thank you very much. Now, would you say that the government of Australia came to this somewhat belatedly? Do you wish they had come to this conclusion a while ago? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you want the good news first or the bad news? Well, either way. The good news is the government is getting very, very, very serious about workplace mental health as serious as physical health has been. The bad news, are you ready? The government is getting very, very serious about mental health in the workplace, Why is almost that bad as news? serious. The bad news is because they're telling us that we're liable now for any problem, psychological injury in the workplace, but they're not telling us what should we do about it. How to do it's it. It's much easier to remove a cord from the floor than identify a mental health problem when no one is telling you about it. Did you know that most people will not tell you when they're suffering until it's too late? Speaking of suffering when you're a manager, you know, I've actually heard, it'll tell me if this is true, that people don't leave jobs, they leave managers. Absolutely. That's what the research has found. People don't leave jobs, they leave bosses. But the vast majority, they don't get a diagnosis in mental health. They stay begrudgingly in their job. The productivity suffers, that this power of decision making suffers. They will take sickies, we call them in Australia, not sure if you use that term here, but they will take sickies. Those sickies are costing companies $578 on average every single sickie. If it is now the law, are managers trained to even perceive this problem? Well, see, the issue is if somebody um, becomes highly dysfunctional, mm -hmm. then everybody notices. It's a little bit too late. But the majority of times they're not trained. They're not trained in, in management school to identify signs and symptoms of somebody becoming unwell. Even really, really good managers that are really good people, sometimes they miss those cues. So we, we, we tend to, 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 to say people are our biggest strength, but then we get rid of them very, very quickly if they, if they don't serve us mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. So in that kind of environment, it's sometimes very difficult for managers to know what their priorities are and to see the value of having a healthy person working for them. Then this leads me to another question. Uh, I cannot help but notice that although you are from Australia, your accent is not typically Australian. My parents are Spanish. Right. I, I was born in Germany, so I'm a little bit confused on, on identity. But if your parents but, are from Spain, then yes. you're probably familiar with what might be called the manana syndrome. Yes. Okay, we'll deal with yes. it tomorrow. The, the manana syndrome is a very interesting syndrome because in this sphere, you can't afford to have it. Interestingly, I should be having the mañana syndrome right. because I'm Spanish, but I'm the guy saying, don't leave it to mañana, right. it has to be done now. But if people need to act now, they need to see the symptoms now. Absolutely. So I want you to give us two or three All things right. that would typically show up in the workplace that would alert a manager, we got a problem here, even though it is not yet acute. All right, so I'm gonna put, give you a tip in a nutshell. One of the things that you wanna look, for, look out for mm -hmm. is a change in a person's normal behavior. Don't look for a problem. I don't encourage people to look for problems, but is it something that has happened in the person's life? If it's a woman, if they usually um, don't wear any makeup, if they start wearing very flamboyant makeup, that's a simple one. If it's a guy and they're usually non-talkative, if they start talking a lot, too much. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're looking for what's not normal in this person. So they should bring you in before things become acute. They should bring you in to make sure that the environment on the mental health side does not become toxic, and they're already worried about that on the physical yeah. health side. Clearly, you believe that the cost of not dealing with Absolutely. this is vastly in excess of the cost of getting people like you to come in there and create a better culture. We're looking right now at the billions of dollars in every single Western country because of mental health. This is to businesses. It's costing them billions of dollars. And I'm sure transferred to consumers. All right, how do people contact you? Uh, our website, www.mhri.com.au, Mental Health Recovery Institute. Fastest way, give us a call. Talk to Jovlin, she's waiting for your call right now. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Joel. A pleasure.